I'm gonna get ready to do an earthworm extraction. So I, I determined my sample location via whatever method I'm using. And I lay my sample grid down. And the first thing I do is I just want to clear away the surface litter. I'm not trying to really pull all the plants up. I'm just trying to clear away the surface litter. And there's actually a fair amount here, you know, all these dead leaves and and now if you're in a relatively unimpacted forest that has a really thick forest floor, you don't want to dig out that whole forest floor, but you're going to probably remove those dry surface leaves unless it rained heavily last night, which it did, in which case in a sugar maple forest you've got those layered maple leaves. There's a nice film of water between those leaves and the small worms will crawl up into that water film and you literally have to check the underside of every single leaf if that's the situation. I've done it. It's painful. Worms will show up in those water films, so you need to be aware of that if you're doing sampling in that kind of habitat. Now here I've primarily got conifer needles and, and litter, so I'm not as worried about that. I'm just going to kind of pull back the surface organic material in my sample area. And in general, I try to clear some area about, you know, three or four inches around. Oh, look who I just found right at the surface. Cute. So you found that then? Uh, well, it's, it was outside my sample grid, so I'm not going to count it. But if it had been inside my sample grid, I would have counted it. Okay. So I'm continuing to kind of prep my site here. And I'm doing this because I want to be able to see what's going on, not just inside my sample grid, but outside. Because when I pour this liquid, and I, I'm actually not pushing this into the soil, I'm just using it to define the sample area. It's not intended to contain the liquid in any way. Um, but I clear around the edges so I can kind of see what's going on. When I pour the liquid, the worms will start coming up almost automatically if they're present. I mean, within seconds, believe it or not. It's fun. That's why kids like to do this, because it's really fun. Um, but some of these earthworms form lateral burrows, and so if, it, if, you know, if the liquid's going down here and I have a worm come up here, I have to make a judgment call. Do I think that it came up here because it, it got touched by mustard in here and it came up laterally? Or do I have some runoff over here and it came up over here because it actually came up outside the sample grid? So you have to use some judgment in terms of which ones you're actually going to collect when you're doing the sampling based on whether or not you think they encountered the mustard kind of draw a vertical line down from your sample area. Does that make sense?